ADHD has two main clusters of symptoms. The inattentive symptoms, which look like disorganization, forgetfulness, having trouble staying on task during work or school. And then the hyperactive impulsive symptoms. In children, those symptoms look like having a lot of energy, running around, climbing on things. In adults, you're going to see more of that verbal impulsivity, that difficulty with decision makings, not thinking before you act. So the disorder does look a little bit different depending on what phase of life someone's in. Because we had so much information on them over so many years, we're the first in a position to actually understand what happens long term to their symptoms. And what we found was that the majority of these children actually had their symptoms wax and wane and fluctuate over the years. So that at some time points they look like they no longer had ADHD and at others the ADHD came back. So we see that fluctuating wave-like pattern. We also found that there was about 10% of the sample that fully recovered from their ADHD long term and didn't appear to have the disorder anymore. Previously people thought that was 50%, so this is a different estimate. For people with ADHD, I think it's important for them to understand that it's normal to have some times in your life where things feel maybe more unmanageable, out of control, and other times when things feel um, more under control, and that you should be ready to seek professional help when things do feel out of control, um, and to expect that pattern could happen for you. A lot of people with childhood ADHD might be expected to have some residual symptoms from it, even if they're doing very well. But unless your symptoms are actively causing a problem in your life, you shouldn't worry about going into a professional. There's a lot of opportunities out there for people with ADHD to be successful, and the key is find a job or a life passion that your ADHD does not interfere with. So you're going to see a lot of creative people have ADHD because they're able to be successful in their creative endeavors in spite of having ADHD. Whereas people who might be required to do very detail-oriented work at a computer all day, that could be a really hard combination for a person with ADHD. So you're really trying to look for a place where you can fit your strengths in without those symptoms undermining your ability to be successful. The most important next question for this research is what causes something to wax and wane. If somebody's got high symptoms one year and low symptoms the next year, if we can find the pattern that leads to the low symptoms, we can work that into our treatment approaches with patients. So my team is going to be interested in doing that research next and trying to understand what factors lead to more successful years for people with ADHD.